everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new um, I'm so glad that you're here to watch my video so for today's video I am going to be talking about my fall TBR I have a lot of books that I want to try to read this fall and might be a little bit ambitious just because I'm in school and so it takes me kind of a long time to read a book so yeah I still want to try to get to all of these books, so I hope that I can. So because of that, I might not get to all of these books, but these are definitely the ones that are at the forefront of my mind to read this fall. And I have this list divided into different sections. The first section would be like the new releases that I'm excited about that are coming out this fall. And because I already made a whole other video on that, I just wanted to mention that I do want to try to read a lot of those this fall, but I'm not going to be going over them again because I literally just made a video about them. The next section of this TBR is going to be rereads, and there are definitely several books that I like to reread in the fall. And the first one is The Diviners by Libba Bray. So this book, I'm pretty sure it's pretty popular. But it takes place in the 1920s and it just has like a lot of like paranormal like ghosts kind kind of stuff in it and it's super good. I love the audiobook because the narrator is very good. So yeah, I really want to try to listen to the audiobook for this again this fall. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear my laundry. My bookshelves are in my kitchen because that's the only place I have room for them and it's right beside my washing machine. So yeah, sorry about that but I really didn't have any other time that I could film this. So the next reread on this list is Harry Potter and this should not be a surprise to anybody because I love Harry Potter and I love rereading it in the fall and it just feels like a cozy fall read. The next two rereads are both graphic novels that I read for the first time last fall and they are Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks and Mooncakes by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walker and this book Pumpkin Heads takes place at a... Jesus that is so loud. <laughs> uh... So Pumpkin Heads takes place at a pumpkin patch, and Mooncakes is about these two, I'm pretty sure they're witches, and they are super cute, and they are both super cute, and so I'm super excited to reread them this fall. So the next category I have are kind of books that I already own, and then there's one in this section that I don't already own, but I'm positive that I'm going to read it because I have it on audiobook. So somewhere. I don't remember which app it's on, but uh, yeah, I'm planning to listen to the audiobook. And that book is The Damned by Renee Audier. And The Damned is a sequel to The Beautiful, which was about a girl who is living in Paris in France in like the 17th century, I think. And she winds up having to move to New Orleans and then bodies start showing up so it's about that and I really liked The Beautiful so I'm really excited to read The Damned and I really want to get the physical copy of that just because the cover is so beautiful. So the next book I have in this section is Now Entering Adamsville by Francesca Zappia and this is about a girl who is falsely accused of arson and of killing the school janitor but she I guess didn't do it so she sets out to try to find who really did do it and in the synopsis the town is described as like having a lot of like ghosty stuff or like mysterious stuff going on so that really intrigued me and I actually got this book last fall to try to read last fall but I underestimated how hard it would be to read during school hold on kitty you can't do this no. No, Becky. Becky. My cat keeps trying to get in 
my sink. Yeah, you know you're being bad. You know you're being bad. But yeah, I wound up not being able to get to this last fall because I underestimated how hard it would be to read during school. So I'm hoping to try to get to it this fall. Who knows if I'll be able to. But I really liked Eliza and her monsters, so I really wanted to try something else by Francesca Zapia. The next book in this section is The Deathless Girls by Karen Millwood Hargrave. And first of all, this cover is stunning. It is foiled and it's so pretty, which is why I bought this book last fall. It's another one of those books where I meant to read it last fall, I just didn't get to it. So hopefully I'll be able to read it this fall. So this book is about twin sisters who are kidnapped and enslaved by this man. And while they are there, like being enslaved, they learn about this mythical creature called the dragon, which is a creature that takes girls as gifts. So I was originally interested in this because I heard that it was a Dracula retelling. So that sounds really interesting to me, but since then I've heard kind of like not the best reviews, so I'm a little bit nervous about reading this, but it's also short, so I still want to read it, but this might, like I might not prioritize this one as much as the other ones on the list just because I haven't heard the best things about it. The next book on this list is The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, and um... I have read all of Ruth Ware's other books and I like them for the most part. I really didn't like The Lion Game, but all the other ones I've enjoyed. So I still really want to read this and the cover just looks like it's very spooky. So this is about a woman who receives a letter that she is going to like receive the inheritance of someone who's just died. and. She knows that it's a mistake, but she still decides to go to the funeral to try to use her like tarot card skills to try to figure out how she can keep this inheritance that doesn't actually belong to her. But while she's there, things just seem super wrong and like not good. So things start going wrong. I don't know. Um, but this book has all like the synopsis of this book has always intrigued me so much like probably more than any other synopsis of a Ruth Ware book so I really need to read this I this is another one that I wanted to read last fall and I just didn't get to but the cover looks super spooky I need to read it in the fall so we're apparently having a trend here because the next book that I have is also one that I wanted to read last fall and that is Five Dark Fates by Kendar Blake which is the last book in the Three Dark Crown series by Kendar Blake. And I meant to read this when it came out last year. I have like a signed first edition and everything. And I don't know, I just didn't get to it. So I really, really need to read this. And because this is the fourth book in a series, I'm just gonna say what the first book is about. And it's basically about this matriarchal society where each matriarch has like triplets and one is a poisoner, one is a naturalist, and one is an elementalist. And they have to kill the other ones to become the next queen. So this is the final book in the series. I'll definitely need to read a recap of the third one in this series because I don't remember very much. But I don't really want to read reread it, so yeah, I really need to get to this. So the next book I have on this list is I don't think it's one that I had last fall to read, but I have been wanting to read it for a while, and that is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. And this book is about Roger and Dodger, who are twins who were like created from what I can tell, and their creator wants to raise them to godhood. So that sounds super interesting to me and this cover just looks very fall and it kind of goes with my shirt so you know so yeah this book has super like fall vibes for me so i really want to try to get to it this fall but it's kind of chunkier than all the other ones it's like over 500 pages so 
it might wind up being in like November or December after classes are over so we'll see but I'm super interested by this book and I really want to read it the next book that I have is one that was super popular last fall and I just never got around to it surprise surprise and that is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo and this book is about a girl named Alex who is attending Yale University and she joins a secret society that is involved with occult practices or something like that and that's really all that I know about it and I don't really want to know much more but this is a dark academia book and I don't know if I've actually read any dark academia books but I, it's something that's always drawn me because for one thing I love academia. I'm thinking about going into academia for my career. So yeah, and I really like dark stories too. So I think the combination of the two would just be like amazing. So yeah, I really need to read this, but I'm kind of nervous because I have heard like mixed reviews on this. So it's kind of a commitment to read this like, I'm trying to see how many pages it is. This like 400 something page book. So it's kind of a commitment to read this like over 400 page book if I will wind up not liking it, but I guess that's just the risk I'll have to take. The next book on this list is The Bone Snatcher by Charlotte Salter. And this book, like look at the cover, like it looks, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it very looks Halloween vibes so i'm super interested in reading this and it's basically just about this girl whose parents this, the cover is so shiny whose parents sold her into servitude at this creepy mansion that is also surrounded by sea monsters and while she's there she finds this box called the monster box and she's hoping that it'll help her escape where she's enslaved and then she starts like uncovering all these secrets and everything about the mansion where she is so it sounds really creepy and it's a middle grade so it's like it'd be easier to read amidst all these other like longer books so yeah i'm really excited about this and it gives me definitely fall vibes so the next book on this list is Sock Hill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is another book that I've been wanting to read forever. Literally forever. And it's basically just about these girls who live on Sock Hill Rock. And there are all these stories going around about this like monster who lives there. And also girls have been disappearing from this location for decades. So yeah, I've been wanting to read this forever. It sounds really creepy and I think its genre is actually listed maybe as horror so I definitely need to read it this fall <laughs> all right almost done so the next book I have on this list is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman and this is about this town that is near a haunted forest that like has this beast and all these bodies start showing up and so this group of friends goes into the forest to try to figure out like what's going on. And I've heard this book compared to Stranger Things, which I love Stranger Things. So if it gives me Stranger Things vibes, then like I think I will love it. But I've also read a couple of other like forest, like creepy forest books that like weren't that creepy to me and I just wound up being bored the whole time like I still there are like a couple that I'm remembering that I gave like three stars last year which isn't bad but I definitely didn't enjoy them the most so um, I'm kind of nervous about this because of that but hopefully I like it more than those ones so the next book I have on this list is The Shadows by Alex North and this is about a man who was friends with a killer when he was a teenager so then he winds up having to go back to his the town that he lived in as a teenager to take care of his mom and bodies start showing up in the same manner as this other killer so they're trying to figure out if it's a copycat killer or if the previous killer is back and i've heard that this is super creepy so i'm probably going to try to read this during october 
I am super excited to read this because I've read I read The Whisper Man by Alex North and I really liked that one so I'm really excited to read this one too and it just sounds super creepy so and I mean the cover like look at this hand like that's just like <laughs> and the last book in this section is Stargazing by Jin Wong, which I have read The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jin Wong a couple of times and I love that book so much. So I definitely want to read this book too. And it has the Children's Literature Award on it right here. So that makes me really excited to read this. And I love her art style. So I'm super excited to get to this and the orange just makes me feel like it, I should read it in the fall. So this is a graphic novel about two friends, one who like sees celestial beings and they tell her that she doesn't like belong on earth but then apparently catastrophe strikes which is what the synopsis says which I'm not really sure what that means but hopefully I will find out. And so the last section that I have are books that I'm interested in reading but I don't own yet but I like I might like to buy them but they're not like super high on my priority list. So yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna get them or not but they're definitely things that I'm thinking about getting and trying to read but it's not as high of a priority as the books that I've already talked about. And so because of that I'm not going to go into as much detail with these ones just because this video is already 25 minutes of footage and I really don't want to edit all of that so yeah so the first one is Silence of Bones and then I have The Witch Boy, The Okay Witch, Night Lights, Sheets, Pashmina, and the Tea Dragon Festival all of which besides Silence of Bones. All of those are graphic novels. And then I have also been hearing a lot of things about the house in the Cerulean Sea. So it's gotten me really excited to try to read that book. So I'm also thinking about that one. And then two other ones that I have kind of on my radar are My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I've been hearing a lot about lately, and Clown in a Cornfield, which just sounds great for October. So, yeah, those are all of the books that I have on this list. I know it was really long, so if you're still watching, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. I don't know if people actually like watch my videos until the very end, so if you do, you should comment an emoji. Hmm. You should comment the monkey emoji because it's really cute. So yeah, comment the monkey emoji if you're still watching. And also if you have any other recommendations for fall books or thoughts on which ones of these I should prioritize, let me know in the comments. And with that being said, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in my next one. Bye.